So this is Go code. In this video, we will see the implementation of extended Euclidean algorithm. If you doesn't know the, what is extended Euclidean algorithm, then you can watch our video on extended Euclidean algorithm. The link is given in the description. So from the previous video, we saw that GCD of A and B can be written as a linear combination of A and B. In the next step of Euclidean algorithm to find GCD, the new A will become B modulo A and new B will become A. And now we can also write the GCD of B modulo A and A as a linear combination, which is B modulo A into x1 plus A into y1. Here this x1 and y1 is different from this x and this y. As we know that b modulo a can be written as b minus floor of b divided by a into a. Now let's substitute the value of b modulo a here. So this equation will become the GCD of b modulo a comma a equals b minus b by a into a into x1 plus a into y1. So this will become b x1 minus b by a into a x1 plus a y1. And now let's take a common from these two values. So this will become a into b by a x1 plus y1 plus x1 into b. Now you can see that this equation and this equation is similar. Now by the comparison the value of x will become y1 minus b by a into x1 and the value of y will become x1. So if we know the value of x1 and y1 then we can easily find the value of x and y by this. Now let's see the implementation part. Here we are finding the GCD of this a and b and the, this x and y is the value of x and y that we want here uh, and this is the base condition when a is 0 it means that b is the gcd of a and b and we will put here that x is 0 and y is 1 because when here a is 0 then the gcd is only become b so here the value of this gcd of a and b is b it means that we can put the value of x as a 0 because a doesn't play any role here and we can put the value of y as 1 because the gcd is b so if we multiply b with 1 then this will remain same that's why here we put x as 0 and y as 1 and here x1 and y1 are the values that we want here since the value of x and y depend on the value of y1 and x1 but the value of x1 and y1 is found in the next step. So before calculating the value of x and y we have to find the value of x1 and y1. That's why here we pass x1 and y1. Since we pass the references so the value of x1 and y1 will change accordingly. After this step we know the value of x1 and y1 so by putting the value of x1 and y1 we can find the value of x and y. So this is the implementation of extended Euclidean algorithm. So let's stop here. In the next video we will see the applications of extended Euclidean algorithm which are finding the modular multiplicative inverse and Diophantine and solve Diophantine equation. And we will also see the implementation of modulo multiplicative inverse.